Welcome to the webinar about the Cisco FD Explorer Reader Tester. My name is Joseph Preisberg Flügel. I am Executive Vice President of Cisco Semiconductor and I'm also business manager of the RFID and NFC activities. If you have any questions during the webinar, uh, or comments, please uh, send an email to rfd at CISC AT. My colleagues will take care about the questions and we can address them at the end. CISC Semiconductor was founded in 1999 and is 100% private owned and we are basically international team of uh, high skilled RFD and NFC experts who have experience in this area for more than 20 years. CISC is headquartered in Klagenfurt, Austria and has an R&D office with focus on NFC in Graz, Austria and additionally we have a sales office in Mountain View, California in particular to serve the Silicon Valley requirements. CISC RFD and NFC is a team of RFD and NFC professionals with long-term international reputation. Our focus is performance improvement for RFD and NFC products and systems through our solutions, which are in particular measurement tools for RFD and NFC conformance, performance, and mobility tests. Furthermore, we are a leader in standardization. This includes ISO IEC, uh, JDS1, SS31 activities, where we uh, had uh, the RFID test development group uh, already for more than 13 years. I'm currently also uh, head of the working group for, for all RF communications covering RFID, RTLS and security. We are very active members in RAIN RFID and NFC forum and I'm also involved as vice chairman for the ETSI uh, regulations in particular for Europe. On the right, see, you see an overview of our products uh, in the RFID testing and NFC testing for all kinds of testing, so sniffing, tag emulation, uh, tag testing, and also the conformance tests. TISC uh, focus in this area is to provide uh, solutions that allow our customers to find and fix read and tag issues in seconds instead of days. So we provide fully automated performance tests for text and reader testing to help you to understand what to do with the readers, what to do with the tags, how to best place them, how to track and manage uh, these activities. Furthermore, we provide automated conformance tests that you can do a conformance tests of products in a very quick way. So as an example, a full Gen 2 v2 conformance test can be done in 15 minutes with our test solutions instead of probably spending as an RFD exp uh, expert one month in the lab to do all these variations of testing. So finally, our tools and services help our customers to save time and money. A core element of all this is our CISC RFD Explorer, which is a compact high precision RFD test instrument. It is to measure performance of RFID devices, application setups, it's to verify conformance and it supports the development of readers, tags, chips and applications. The Explorer key features are high precision, fast and easy to use, it's for tag tests and reader tests, it's for performance and conformance, it's for the full automation, it's for the self-calibration, uh, is controlled using a GUI or API for integration to other software and for the tech testing it supports monostatic and biostatic setup. The later one is required for all the test standards. The Explorer is a very versatile test equipment so it combines performance tests, conformance tests, reader tech tests but also the integration into manufacturing and this provides the strong benefit that you can combine this and you can uh, have very sophisticated tests that uh, can really ensure that products fulfill the application requirements. Today's webinar is on the reader sensitivity testing. So since reader sensitivity testing covers measuring the transmit power, doing a variable backscatter for measuring the actual reader sensitivity and then certainly reporting communication settings that you understand under what conditions the measurement has been done. 
and furthermore to vary tag parameters to see how the reader behaves under worst case conditions. On the picture here you see a setup where we do conducted tests. So you have a UHF RFID reader on the right side. You have the RF sensor mo module of the Cisco RFID tag emulator on the left side. And this sensor module basically receives the reader power and does the backscatter and in that way does the reader testing. Um, for the contactless testing, um, we have uh, now set up uh, this in the lab. So on the left, you see again the sensor module that is connected uh, to the RFID Explorer, forming the tech emulator and the power measurement. On the right-hand side, you see the reader antenna that is uh, used uh, for by the reader, so the device under test, and in this way, uh, the contactless testing is done. Let me show you the reader performance tester based on the Cisco RFID Tech Explorer Tech Emulator. So in order to do so, we have set a particular PC with well-distributed bit combinations. We have set the number of tests per test point to 10. Actually, the RAIN RFID uh, specification currently requires 100, but as uh, this takes more time, we set it down to 10 because it actually depends on the reader and the collision speed how fast it is. So let's start. So first measurement uh, selected the low power for the reader. So it scans uh, from 0 to 10 points and um, we get the first result around 16 dBm and minus 58 um, dB receiver sensitivity. And we change the um, power to um, a little bit higher value. We uh, continue the testing. So there's a check whether the reader power has been ch changed really or as intended. And uh, the scan continues and you will shortly see the new result for the new power level. Good. Uh, let's uh, select the third power level. Continue the plot. And we have uh, the search result. Now let's take uh, the highest power level we can do here. On the right hand side you see the use tari, the article, the article, the division ratio, the encoding, and uh, also the PLF that has been measured. And uh, here we have our particular curve now from power level and uh, sensitivity. What we now do is uh, we change the setting of the um, tech emulator, so we reduce the PLF by 10%. This means that the tech always will uh, use a different PLF than requested by the reader, so not exactly what it is, but it will show some variation. So before I forget, let's mark uh, the old curve is PLF 56K as we have measured it here. And we go for the new plot now, same power level, and we measure is uh, the modified PLF. So 
So you see there's a difference in the detail level, and you see also that the measured PLF is no longer uh, 256, but it's only 230K, so we say PLF 230K. Good. Um, let's take, select uh, another power level. and uh, continue this plot. And we see that the receiver sensitivity remains uh, much lower here. And to continue this kind of uh, records then uh, New power level. Uh, here the sensitivity then uh, gets equal. So there's some variation uh, that needs to be understand, understood. And now let's go to the lowest power level that this reader provides. And we continue the plot again. And uh, we see these uh, measurement results here. So uh, the measurement results uh, can also be uh, viewed in a different way. So you can save the plot, but you can also have a look on the uh, result in, uh, in a different way. Okay, so <clears throat> we save them as a PNG file. Or uh, we save them as uh, as the result file, and and if I want to have then a look on the result file, I would simply open this. And see this then in the in the browser where I can then uh, have a look. Uh, on the results also in that form, what were the actual measured result, what settings have been used, what and so on and so on, and I can compare this. Now I would like to show you uh, how the Cisco for the Explorer with the tech emulator functionality can be used for testing and optimizing applications and readers. This is uh, basically two folds. On the one hand side, there is the sniffer for the analysis of the RF communication between tags and readers, and the tag emulator for the evaluation of behavior under challenging conditions. 
This is the software for the um, Cisco RFID Explorer Tag Emulator and Sniffer. And uh, using this software, we can start with a quick joint time frequency analysis and see what's ongoing in the RF field. So there's no communication at all. And once I turn on uh, the reader, I see a typical reader communication. And as soon as I introduce uh, the tag into the field, I also see the very broad uh, spectrum of the RFID tag that uh, is very clearly, uh, you can very clearly identify. I can also have a look on this then on the data level. Um, maybe uh, this free running options is not that uh, suitable. So I set a trigger on the acknowledge command and see what RF communication is ongoing and can identify uh, what the reader is doing here, what the reader is doing with the tag, maybe <clears throat> place the tag a little bit closer to the reader. Um, then it uh, works pretty nicely, so I can see query, acknowledge, uh, tag response, request RN, and then the reader is obviously uh, getting this back, and then it starts with the next query wrap. I can also have a look here uh, how the reader is efficient the reader is, how often it reads the tag, so based on the color of the signals, I can clearly see query commands are blue, uh, acknowledge is green, request RN is, uh, is red, and the data response from the tag is orange. If I remove the tag, I simply see that the reader is uh, doing uh, is uh, just lots of queries. Uh, it seems that the reader is identifying some uh, noise as a acknowledge uh, as an RN16 because it occasionally sends acknowledge commands. But very obvious, there is no response, and uh, for that reason, it turns on, turns off the RF field, and then it's done. So let's bring the tag uh, back into the RF field. Uh, you see the communication, maybe we switch to a, a single trigger. And with the single trigger, we see then uh, what's ongoing here. And we can do a further analysis uh, of this communication. So this uh, covers, for instance, um, the evaluation of the, the command sequence. So let's go back. So the acknowledge command, for instance, was command number one that was recorded. So I go there to the command number one. I see the acknowledge command with the appropriate response. So this was uh, a reference tag of uh, CISC. And I see what time, the limiter length, tarry length, article. There was no tier colleague, obviously, on the acknowledge. And I see this uh, detail on information. So if I step back once to the query, then I also see a TR call because a query has also a TR call. I can do a quick check or an automatic check what's ongoing here. This is appropriate. I can look on the uh, command sequence in detail. So I have here the query with the content. I have the RN16. I have uh, the acknowledge uh, and then the CLC16 here in the binary format or more better readable in the hex format and the CLC16 as well. Uh, similar I can do on the query where I can look on all the details, what was the query setting, so command code, DR factor, Miller, select, session, and a few other parameters. So I can really nicely analyze uh, what's ongoing here and see <clears throat> what the reader is doing and what coding has been used and also what the tag was doing. So this was really evaluating uh, a real tag which is in the RF field. On read analysis, I can look uh, on the spectrum, on the command sequence. I see here that this is obviously a reader using phase reversal ASK modulation. Uh, on the tag analysis, I can have a look on spectrum return time and get this automatic evaluation.
So if you would like to capture additional uh, communication uh, between reader and tag for a longer while, there's the opportunity of streaming. So you see the communication in the GUI, but in parallel press here on the stream button. Once done, uh, there can be done a record analysis uh, of the streaming. So you press the button and then there's a post-processing of the RF signals and the communication is um, extracted. So on the left uh, screen you see then the, uh, the, the data, uh, the packages that are captured. For instance, you have here the data and this um, CSC16 with the EPC. You have uh, acknowledge command. You can also show this command then in the top uh, logical signal view or if you want to analyze more on the RF side, you show it in the main graph. And then, for instance, with a zoom, uh, you can then analyze details, look on the signal details, and understand what's happening here. Additionally to evaluating uh, this here, we can also use the XML file. And so I open the browser. and I open the XML file we just recorded and then I can see the communication in that way, for instance, uh, again, what uh, has been done here and uh, what parameters have been set and I can scroll through the file to see if how often my RFID tag, which I wanted to read, has been uh, recognized. Instead of using um, the regular tag uh, or additionally using the regular tag, we can also use the tag emulator, uh, which is then turned on that way. And then you see uh, that the tag emulator is now communicating here uh, with the reader. You can switch uh, to the tag emulator view, so the digital signal, so you see really what's ongoing here and whether the tag emulator uh, understands the command, but also what uh, replies are generated by the tag emulator. And now modifying um, parameters of the tag emulator, so very obvious uh, to modify the uh, gain, uh, sorry, the, the, the backscatter uh, attenuation. Then uh, you see uh, how this changes over time. And at a certain point, uh, the reader gets troubles to detect this and if you further decrease then uh, the backscatter signal gets too weak for the reader and uh, the reader does stop uh, to be, uh, recognize the full data communication here. This brings me to the end of the webinar uh, about the CISC RFID Explorer as RAIN RFID tester. This RFID Explorer is not only a reader tester, but, but as mentioned already earlier, it can be used uh, for tech performance test, tech conformance test, system performance test, reader test, sniffer. So whatever, whatever you need uh, for your RFID testing, this can be um, covered with the CISC RFID Explorer in order to understand uh, what's ongoing on the, in the application. Also, uh, as it is a very compact and small device, uh, it's delivered uh, in a suitcase, so it also is also very useful for your field operation. So you get on-site an application, you go to a customer, you want to do a tech performance test there, you want to check your system performance, you want to analyze the RFD communication between reader and tech, just take it with you and you can do uh, all the testing on on site then. For more information, please uh, look under www.cisc.at slash explorer where we provide additional information, some downloads, and you can get these documents there. Meanwhile, um, I received one question and the question was about the BLF and uh, the question was why would uh, we test the reader 
with a BLF that is not as the BLF requested by the reader. So the answer to this question is basically that uh, tags uh, have very strong variation and if you look on the Gen 2 specification you see that uh, one of the parameters with the strongest variation is the link frequency, so the BLF, because tags have a very low cost uh, uh, oscillator built in, so uh, depending on the tag technology probably it's an oscillator with 2 megahertz and so it's very likely that um, the BLF cannot be hit exactly as requested by the reader, there's some production variation, there's some temperature variation and uh, for that reason <coughs> uh, the BLF tolerance, the allowed BLF tolerance for the tag is plus minus 10% in the typical application case it could be even worse uh, in some cases and it doesn't help uh, you to select a reader which works perfectly for a perfect tag but uh, has a significant um, rece receiver performance reduction if the tags are really uh, using all the variations of the parameters. So for that the BLF test uh, is very important. Also for the other fact that um, I mean the RFID, Gen 2 RFID technology was developed over the last 10 years more than 10 years and uh, what you have heard from the latest figures it's really ramping up now so we're talking about billions of tags, hundreds of thousands of readers and so it's not only a few companies who were basically developing the technology in the market over the last 10 years but more and more people get involved in the technology and to a certain extent they have to catch up uh, on the experience and for that reason there is some time some lack of information on how to deploy develop the best product and so we get uh, also lots of low-cost products and those uh, uh, devices have some uh, reasons why they can be low cost and this could have some impact on the performance for that reason it's really important to do such testing not only for the ideal condition but really for defined worst case conditions. Good, uh, I have not received any further questions, uh, maybe some are still in the email uh, chain uh, on the server, so if you have any further question please do not uh, hesitate uh, to send it to me uh, at rfid at cisc.at and we'll come back uh, with details on the answer then during the next couple of days. Thank you very much for participating on this webinar and I'm looking forward to see you somewhere soon. Thank you, bye.